you know, Butch told y'all last week that uh, that I was possibly going to speak about sin, and I and I got to think about that, and I thought, boy, that probably sounds pretty weird. Uh, and so, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to go through and kind of give you a little bit of the derivation that came came along for me to to come up with this to this study, because I actually I'm not studying sin. I'm studying salvation. And uh, in today's world, salvation, how you present it to people and how we, how we lead people to Christ is completely different than what it was 50 years ago. You know, we had 50 years ago in, in the 50s and 60s, you had maybe even the 70s, you had the door knocking campaigns and those kind of things. And, and those really aren't effective any longer. Uh, we, when we had our big um that one summer when we had the big the two-week thing i think it was and every every door and ada was knocked on and we did have a lot of people that were baptized i i'll be honest with you i think we had a lot of people that were put in the water i don't know that they were truly baptized because i don't know that they really understood and out of that we had i think it was it was over 50 uh people that that entered the baptistry and we'll put it that way and, and please don't take that I'm judging because that's not that's not what I mean at all but out of that 50 some odd people I think there were only three that ended up being faithful and so I, I think that when we look at salvation and how we present it to people it's it's different than what it used to be and I, I think our the the Who's your one? I think is wonderful, and I really encourage people to think about that. Who's your one? That one person, maybe two people. I, I don't care if it's ten people that's on your mind, but I really encourage you to think about those people and put their names in there, in the the little box back there. In in. Pray for them. Allow us to pray for them. Because I think that's how people are led to Christ today. And it's because it's that personal relationship. Uh, I, that's my study. And so whenever I was thinking about salvation, I got to thinking about, okay, where, what's, also, what's the problem with, with leading people to Christ? And I got to thinking about it. Are people really, in today's culture, in the United States, I don't, I don't know about other countries, but I'll speak about the United States, are people afraid of hell? Do they even know what hell is? Do they believe in it? If they do believe in it, again, are they afraid of it? And I don't think they are. I think we as Christians understand it, I think the faith-based community as a whole probably understand it, but I think even in the faith-based community, I'm not sure that they're really afraid of hell. And so then that got me to thinking, okay, so do they really understand what sin is? Because sin is what sends us to hell. I mean, it's our our sin and then our, our lack of obedience to the gospel that puts us in eternal damnation. So that's where I come up. I thought, okay, so maybe I need to understand a little bit more about what sin is. And so that's, that's, my, that's how I came about to this part. I'm starting, and, and I've just started, a study on salvation starting with sin. Does that make sense? If, if it doesn't, well, that's still how I did it, so I don't know. But anyway. Um, and, and, and also think about it. For us, or for, well, not just for us, for anybody. Why did Jesus come to this earth? He lived a sinless life. 
and he died on the cross. He carried my sin. He carried your sin. He carried it all to the cross. Why else would he have been here because, other than because of sin? And so I, I just, I, I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking, this is pretty important stuff to, in my mind. So, um, and I'm, I'm, I don't, whenever I get up here like this, I don't prepare lessons. I, I, did, I do my study, so y'all bear with me as I go through, and I have to look at my notes a little more often. What is the one word that talks about what we receive as a Christian? Starts with a G. Huh? Salvation. Salvation. Grace. Right. Okay, so what is grace? Do what? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm deaf. So I got this yeah. thing in my ear. It's a gift, sure. It's a gift. It's not something we earn, is it? It's not something that we merit. There's the, the, the clinical definition is unmerited favor. So because of that grace, the grace of Christ, the grace of God, I'll go so far as to say the grace of the Holy Spirit, because they're all part of the Godhead, we have salvation that, that Wade was mentioning as well. <clears throat> okay, again, let's, um, so I want to go to, excuse me, I want to go to why we have grace, and again, it goes back to sin. So all these things come back to why we need what we have. Okay, so let's define sin. There's the clinical definition, which is out of Webster's or wh whatever dictionary you want to use. Uh, I don't remember which one I got this one from, but an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. Okay, so what does that mean? So then I thought, well, we go to the, the Greek definition. Okay, there's, uh, and Butch mentioned this, you have the Greek and the Hebrew. You have, the Greek is harmatia, I, I don't know how to speak Greek. Uh, in Hebrew, I sure don't know how to speak Hebrew, but it's ch chata, C-H-A-T-T-A-H, but they mean the same thing, missing the mark. Okay, and we've all heard that, I'm, I'm sure, over time. I'm going to get wound up in this cord here in a minute. Bear with me a second. Okay, so we can sit there and we can look at this, and does that really tell you any more than what you knew about sin to begin with? It didn't me. So then I thought, okay, so why do we, where do we go to sin? So my thought was, well, let's just go to the beginning where it all started. And so uh, let's everybody turn over in your, in your Bibles to chapter, Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to go to verse 15. I don't know if y'all know, but whenever you're, when you know you're being streamed, I guess, whatever it is, makes you a little more nervous even than what you were just being up here to begin with. <clears throat> I'm so happy to see everybody's faces, uh, and, and I'm happy that everybody's joining us that, that still is feeling that they need to be at home, uh, but I am so happy to see your faces. Okay. Uh, verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it 
and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Okay, and then let's go on to verse 18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Okay, so that's all pretty important there. And then on down to verse 21. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So here we have this this relationship, first of all, between God and man, first, right? Uh, we know that, and we know that they had a direct relationship. Let's go over to verse, uh, chapter 3. In uh, verse 8, this is how we know that they had a direct relationship. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Well, it's just the first part of that verse. But they had that God was there. He was in the garden with them. Can you all imagine? I, I was reading this earlier this week and I was thinking the cool of the day. Can you all think? I mean, just think about being in the garden of Eden. We can't because we haven't seen anything that, that beautiful and that that magnificent but but just the cool of the day and and just walking through the garden it was such a wonderful place and I'm saying all that for a reason okay let's go to let's uh let's look at verse one a again I, I do want you to picture that as, as best as you can in the garden of Eden thinking about how wonderful this place was. And to think about how that Adam and Eve, they had it made. They were missing nothing. <clears throat> Every need was taken care of, both physically, emotionally, spiritually, however you want to say it, all the different ways that their needs could be uh, taken care of they were met in the Garden of Eden. In verse, chapter 3, verse 1, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God knows that when you eat, eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight to the eyes and that the tree was desired to make one wise she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate and then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were and I, I can't say that word in front of y'all I'm sorry they were unclothed how's that um And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. I, I just I thought about that when I was reading. I thought, I cannot say that word in front of everybody. So, y'all quit laughing at me. <clears throat> okay, again, they had that direct relationship with God. But then there was that one tree. That one, that, 
that one tree. I mean, they had all these other trees, I, I, thousands. You know, I think about Alvin and Hazel, my, my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, at their house. You know, I, I can't remember. He counted one time how many pecan trees they had. And it was in the hundreds. And uh, it was like 140-something, or I, I don't remember. It was a bunch, a bunch of pecan trees that they had. And, and I'm talking about their whole, their whole place. And, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, think about how many trees were in the Garden of Eden. But there was that one tree that was the temptation. And how often does that happen to us? As we sit there and we, we have all these wonderful things, but there's that one thing. I don't, I, you know, you pick what it is for you, but there's that one thing. And, and the tree evidently was very unique. Um, I, I, I don't know, but we know, we know three things about that tree. It was, uh, well, I thought I had them all memorized. Uh, it was a beautiful tree. The fruit was good to eat. Don't, and it, don't know that it was an apple. Could have been, but we don't know. Uh, but it could make one wise. That's what was in Eve's mind. Personally, I'm as dumb as a rock, and I'd just soon stay that way. Because I would still be in the Garden of Eden. I don't need to be wise. <laughs> People say, well, you got that right. So... Uh, Okay, let me ask y'all a question. When you, when we, what we just got finished reading, was there only one sin committed at that time? Well, obviously, I think no. I think there was more than one sin. There was the sin that they disobeyed God in the aid of the tree. But I'm in particular looking at Adam. Let's go to 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2. I believe it's chapter 2. Yes, chapter 2, verse 13. And actually, let's go uh, up to verse 12 first. It says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Okay. Okay. Eve was tricked by the serpent, by Satan. Okay. Adam walked into it willingly. And I'm going to go so far as to stretch here a little bit in that one of the sins that Adam, or the sin that Adam committed besides eating the fruit, was that he allowed somebody to lead him. I think a sin for us men, we need to understand that we need to be leaders. And when we're not, guess what? It's a sin. So I, I say all this to see that sin is not just something that's simple that we can necessarily tangibly see as far as eating a piece of fruit or telling a lie. I, I'm, we, can, we could go look up uh, in Galatians and look at the list of sins that are out there. But we have those tangible, but there's other things that we have allowed 
and, and I'm talking about we being mankind, not just the men, but everybody, that we have allowed to just kind of think, eh, it's not that big a deal, so it's really not sin. And it's important that we realize that sin is missing the mark, no matter what that mark is, or what that, what or however, not maybe not miss it, the mark is always the same, but it's how we miss the mark does not change. No, I'm not saying that right. When we, the mark is the same, how we miss the mark will change. Uh, possibly. Different sins are different ways of missing that mark. But that is where I think, and, and, and please, use, please excuse the, the phrase I think, but I think that is where we have a problem in today's world is we do not see sin as being sin. Because, oh, I don't, I don't lie. I don't drink. I don't cheat on my taxes. I don't do any of those things that are, everybody says are sin. But I do, there's some other things that I do, but that, that's not really sin, is it? And I think that's where we get into problems. I think also we get into problems is we've tried to muddle what what sin is. I'm, I'm just, I've had an example in my mind, and I've been kind of avoiding saying it, but I think it's the be, the most clear example of this. Back several years ago, I was. Uh, a groomsman in a wedding in Dallas, and and uh, we were after the wedding. We were all sitting there talking and and in different things. And there was this couple. I thought they were just boyfriend and girlfriend, and they were. They were not married, but they lived together. Well, in their eyes. That wasn't sin. Now, do not ask me how that they could justify that in their minds because I couldn't, because I, I didn't ask them. I was afraid to. Uh, we, we do often, we turn things and we think, well, that's not really sin. Because I, I love him. He loves me. We're, we're going to get married someday, so therefore it's not sin. And so we've taken God's word and fit it into what makes me happy, what makes me think is okay. What did Eve do? She took a command, a direct command. By the way, as far as I can tell, the only negative command that Adam and Eve received because every other command that they had was be fruitful and multiply and name the, name the animals eat of everything else the only negative command that they had was don't do this the, again and I may be wrong and y'all tell me if I am but I can't think of any other and didn't find any other spot where it, where it says other than that one spot and so what does Eve do? She takes it, and she goes, well, you know, really, that, that tree sure is awful pretty. It's the most beautiful tree in the, in the garden. Wow, look at that fruit. That's really, that's, that's some good fruit. And I sure would like to know what's good and evil. I sure would like to be wise. The serpent's right. He'll just this will just make me that much better. She reasoned herself in into taking that fruit. And and then again I'll go back to Adam. He didn't even realize he was with her. Okay, yeah, I'll take a bite. 
Do y'all agree or disagree? I, I think it's important that we look at sin as sin is. It's black. And it doesn't matter whether it is a little white lie or cheating on your spouse. I'm, I'm just grabbing stuff out of the air. I don't. It is sin. And sin is what separates us from God. Okay, y'all, I'm doing all the talking, and, and it's, it's easy to do that in, in, an, in an auditorium like this. What are some other examples of sin, of people that sinned in, in the Bible? Okay, let's go. Uh, James 4, 17, what this said. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Okay, so that means we need to be doing the right thing, don't we? We need to be moving forward. Now, I, I realize... When we talk about, you know, the subject, the topic of sin, we're not going to get everything covered in, in today, so in, in one lesson. It's just not possible. Uh, we could, several of these things we could spend by itself, we could spend a lot of time on, on sin. What about some people in the Bible that, that sinned? And things happened because of it. David? David? Sure. Oh, Ananias and Sapphira. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay if if I only give part of the money and just don't tell anybody. I don't know that giving giving less than everything was the problem that with Ananias and Sapphira, it's the fact that they lied. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter oh, two, three, is it that? five? Okay. Verse 1, but, an, but a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and with his wife's knowledge he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. And after an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. But Peter said, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have uh, buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. 
Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. Okay? So it was because it's it was because she lied. It's because he lied. I have heard lessons that it was because they kept the money back was why. And and that and the, and that brings up another good point in that we need to really look at our actions and and realize what is truly sin in our lives and and understand we're all sinners in this room. I am. I'm chief. And so we need to realize or we need to think about our actions and make sure that we are looking at how we live our lives and that we are living, doing everything we can not to be sinful and to understand what sin really is. I don't, I don't know that I'm really saying what I'm... I don't know if I'm getting across very well what I'm trying to say, but I'm, I want to talk about Noah for a minute or the, the time leading up to Noah. Okay. There, there's two things, two, two different events in the Bible, one being Noah, the other one being Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. Both situations in, with Noah's time, out of the entire world, there were eight people that were saved. All we recognize is that Noah is the one that was called righteous. So I'm not, I've always wondered if his sons were, and I, th and I think they probably were, because they were taught by him, and then there's some other things that, we, that we'll, maybe we'll look at here in a minute that tells us that they were righteous. But it says in the Bible that, right, that Noah was a righteous man, okay? Let's go over to Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, they couldn't even find in the whole town, two towns, I guess, they could even find five righteous people to save that, that area. I, I've heard it said many times that if, if it gets much worse, God's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah or apologize to the earth, all the people that lived when Noah uh, built the ark. Well, I, I'm going to disagree with that. I don't think God needs to apologize for anything. Uh, but there's a lot of righteous people. There's righteous people in this room. Okay. But in our world today, we are, we are in that same situation that we saw, that we see with Noah, what happened in, in Noah's time. And what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah and other, other times. Sin is prolific and we have to protect ourselves. Um, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 6. Let's go look at, sorry, let's look at verse 5. It says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man who I have created from the face of the land, man and animals, and creeping things, and birds of the heaven, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Okay. Now let's go over to um, let's go over to chapter 9 
verse 20. Okay. We have had the flood. All of this evil has been destroyed. It's gone. Okay. Then we come into Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. There are eight people still. Uh, verse 20. Noah began to be a man of the soil, and he planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk. And lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness, excuse me, of his father and told his brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it up on both their shoulders, and walked backward and covered their father. Uh, their faces were turned backward and that they did not see their fathers, you know, when... When, I'm sorry, it really bothers me. I don't know why, but when Noah woke from his wine and knew what his young son, youngest son had done to him, he said, Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants shall, be, shall he be to his brothers. Sin is already back. It's already back. I mean, done, we've gone through this major event where everything is destroyed. And by the way, if y'all want to look at some interesting stuff, there's some uh, on Apologetics Press. There's a, a deal about, it's called uh, Dismantling Evolution. Uh, you can get on YouTube. Uh, it uh, talks about the flood and how the flood, this is a completely different side, uh, off on a side note, but how the flood created, it was more than just a flood how it created the world that we see today with the continents and everything else. It's really interesting. I, um, anyway, we see this righteous man who lost control and got drunk. And then we see his son who looks upon him and and <laughs> And I would imagine, I don't, I don't know, but I would imagine whenever, is it Ham? Is that, who, is that the one? Yeah, Ham. Whenever he came out, you know, he was disrespectful is what it, what it boils down to. And he was going, Shem and Japheth, you ought to see Dad laying in the tent in there. It, it was his disrespectfulness and how he treated his father. I don't know that that's what happened, but I do know the disrespectfulness because to look on his father that way was, would have, in that time, would have been considered disrespectful. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, again, a minor thing. But it is still sin. And so, with the bell having rung, the conclusion that I'm trying, that I want to bring is that we need to look into our lives and we need to look at it openly and look at the sin. Now, where this goes with going back to salvation, I don't know yet. I don't know how we can approach someone, and especially in today's world with the cancel culture that we have now. If you say anything that's negative to someone, your uh it's hate speech it's it's all these you know different things that that people are getting upset about and you're telling people how to love so I, I don't know how we i still don't know how we approach people to get them to understand that yes living with someone is a sin lying to someone is a sin. I don't know how we approach that when people don't want to hear it. I don't that I hadn't figured out yet, and I'm working on it. Uh, I don't count on me getting the answer, but I'm going to try awful hard. Uh, but I'm. I, I just in in when we talk about sin, we've got to realize that sin is real, and we've got to help people to realize 
that it is a real thing and that hell is what's waiting on us if we don't obey the gospel of Christ. Any comments? I hope, hope this was at least somewhat helpful. I don't know if it was or not, but, but I hope it was. I'm, uh, I've got a long way. This is, this is the first part of my studies, so it's got, I've got a long way to go. Any comments? Okay. I love you guys. Thank you.